the meat and potatoes of the executive order of President Trump. This is attorney Naresh Gehi and I get numerous phone calls in connection with the executive order which has been recently passed by President Donald Trump. A lot of people in this country are worried about the executive order. At this point of time, the executive order applies to seven countries, as you all rightly know. Uh, it starts from Iran, Iraq, Yemen, Syria, Somalia, Libya, and one other country. But at the end of the day, let me explain you what is happening in the country and let me give you a basic background of what is an executive order. Under the Constitution of the United States, under Article 2, the President has the power to pass an executive order. Under the executive order, the President has the right to actually come out with a plan wherein he can stop nationals a few countries, but how far can it go? That's the question. So we are going to basically talk about is the executive order going to be valid before the courts? My answer is no. Because the executive order which has been passed by President Donald Trump is way overbroad. And when this matter appears before the courts, the courts look at the broadness of the order. This matter or similar matters in the past have appeared before the courts. And uh, for example, in the Stryker case in 1996, when President Clinton tried to use his executive, executive authority, the courts came down and said, no president, you cannot do that because the powers which you're using are overbroad. And based upon my analysis, the courts may be striking down this order especially because of what I've read and based upon my research. The other problem with the executive order is that it is singling out a particular group. For example, the executive order says that Christians should be given special status and Muslims should be banned. There's a leading case on that point and this case came in from Minnesota wherein there was a religious group that tried to make a distinction between two separate groups. The name of that case is the Larson case and it's known as Larson versus Vanett. What happened in Larson versus Vanett is that in Minnesota, a group came before the court and said that since this particular charity is making more than 50%, they have to register and other charities do not have to register. So the court said that you cannot violate the establishment, the establishment clause of the United States Constitution, I apologize, the establishment clause of the United States Constitution, uh, wherein you are granted First Amendment rights. So this is a violation of the First Amendment. This is my analysis of what is happening in the country. Some other news which I've been getting from people, do not travel. Folks, if you are a citizen, my personal analysis is that you don't have to worry. The only time if you're a citizen you have to worry is if you have been charged with espionage, if you got your citizenship to fraud by means of fraud, if you've done something wrong in your application. Because if you are a citizen, you have very special rights in this country. So there's a lot of news which is going around wherein people are scared. Naresh Gay doesn't like to scare people. I want to make sure that all are happy and keep fighting for your rights. And is the executive order fair? The answer is no. We are a country that believes in equality before law and equal protection of the laws. We understand there are problems in this world, but we all as human beings are here to unite together to solve the problem. But if we are going to discriminate on the basis of race, alienage and national origin, this is not the America that we all live in. United we stand and divided we fall. The biggest secret of the success of our great nation is that we all are united. And yes, I do understand there are problems. Yes, it's not that I don't disagree with people who are watching me on today's TV show or on YouTube. 
that are problems in the country. But for us to ban a complete community, is that fair? Let's take a simple example about this issue. Not a long time ago, but in the 90s, Timothy McVeigh had committed a domestic attack on our soil. So did we basically ban an entire community? It would be unfair for us. We all have to move on in our lives. And what is the impression that we are giving in the world when we are telling people that we are banning particular groups? You can turn and twist the law, but the reality never changes in life. So at the end of the day, we all need to move on. We are a country which is full of love and respect for each other. And what we can achieve together is just amazing. So we all need to unite during this difficult time. We need to come together and we need to get back to our jobs. At the end of the day, if you are worried about your relative coming back, if he's a green card holder, and if there's an emergency, I would recommend you, then only you travel outside right now, especially if you belong to those seven countries. My recommendation is, is until the dust settles, I don't want you all to leave the country, especially if you're a green card holder. But if it's an emergency, you will have to take your chances. But when you come back to the border, do let them know that you want to see an immigration judge. What is the worst thing they can do? Uh, they can just put you in jail. Do not sign the abandonment form. Tell them you're not abandoning your rights. Tell them you need your day in court. You are a green card holder. You're entitled to equal protection of the law, which means you are not, nobody's above the constitution. Constitution is the number one thing we have in our country. So let them know that yes, you're ready to fight for your rights and God willing, you all are going to be fine. Uh, besides that, on a intellectual note for scholars who are interested on this issue, the United States has signed the Refugee Convention and the, we signed the Refugee Convention in 1951. And uh, for scholars, a treaty is known as the law of the land, which is equal to our constitution. So basically a treaty prevails over an executive order. So even if you're looking at it from a refugee's perspective, we have signed treaties and we cannot just revoke our obligations. And in order to do so, we have to go before the Congress of the United States. And when treaties are signed, we all know that those treaties go before the Congress of the United States and we need a two-third majority. And that majority was given in 1951. So at the end of the day, the Refugee Convention is still in place and we are still a signatory to the Convention Against Torture. And under Article 3, one can apply before our courts were here. So at the end of the day, we have international obligations. Friends, in today's world, we have to sink and swim together. And my humble request to everyone is to make sure that you all protect your rights and make America a great nation and keep it as a great nation as always.